Open world games are kind of boring. Sure, there's an insane amount of things to do in these types of games, and you definitely get your money's worth in time invested, but a lot of that time is spent doing this. Which, in most open world games, can be really tedious and unengaging. But it's okay, if that's too time consuming and uninteresting to you, most open world games have the solution in the form of this. But what's the point in having a vast and uncharted game world if no one wants to explore it? You could always have random things to interact with while you're out discovering the world, like Red Dead's pop-up events. Or have different forms of transportation to make getting to your destination faster, like GTA's driving and Far Cry's wingsuit. But to me, a good open world game that keeps me from wanting to magically teleport to every location starts with a good movement system. I'm Dreambot, and on this episode of Feature Framing, I'll be talking about Sunset Overdrive's silky smooth movement system. Just a quick addendum here before we get started. Y'all sleeping on Sunset Overdrive. This game was forgotten about pretty quick, but it's fun as hell. If you have an Xbox, go buy it. It's like $10 now. In Sunset Overdrive, you play a custom character with a carefree attitude just after an infection breaks out from drinks supplied by a giant soda corporation. This game is silly, colorful, comedic, and the movement system matches the game's personality perfectly while being smooth as eggs to use. You can bounce, grind, swing, wall run, and more across the map to get to your destination in an exhilarating way. I rarely, if ever, use the fast travel in this game. It was much more fun to find my own way there. But even if you did choose to fast travel once in a while, there's a fun animation to go with it. The world in Sunset has a lot of verticality to it, which is perfect for its movement system. I had a lot of moments in this game similar to Breath of the Wild where I just looked at something tall and went, yeah, I want to climb that. In Zelda, the reason being more about exploring its beautiful environments, while Sunset Overdrive was because I knew it would be a bean of a time to bounce and wall jump my way up there. They also make not using fast travel worth it by having it add to your combo for all the different ways you string together your movement across the map. In fact, killing enemies on the ground without using the movement system actually doesn't add to your combo at all, and the combo will even end if you stay on the ground for more than a second. Killing dudes once you're back on that grind will make your combo skyrocket, incentivizing you even further to move with speed and style. They have tons of different abilities just for the movement, so once your combo meter is high enough, some dope new powers kick in. Another aspect that applies well to this movement system is the tight, full map Sunset Overdrive has. Everywhere you move, there's something to bounce on or walls to interact with. Even the water that bridges two pieces of land is never too far for you to set up a sweet movement combo to cross it. The movement system is also carefully crafted to be accessible, but not too easy so skilled players can feel like their button inputs matter and filthy casuals can feel like they are still pulling off some sweet moves. One way this balance is achieved is through the hitboxes, or I guess in this instance land boxes, being bigger than the actual grind rail or swing posts so that the player magnetizes towards their next landing point. This makes landing these movement abilities less precise, but there's still not a big enough gap for this magnetism to be noticed too easily, so that you're still satisfied landing these tricks, even though it's a tad bit simpler than you might think. One more thing to touch on is how this game does its collectibles, and how they work alongside the movement system. Open world games are notorious for spamming your minimap with hundreds of meaningless collectibles that most of the time only net you a small boost to your trophy and gamer score count. Although Sunset does have that same quantity when it comes to collectibles, it utilizes them well. Collectibles are found on the path of each movement ability, so finding them isn't really a chore, but even the ones that are a little out of the way are fun to grab because of how great jumping around is. The collectibles also act as currencies, so you can upgrade abilities, giving them an actual impact on the game. And that was the thing, as we just said, a lot of people play games for different reasons. Let's try to encourage people to go and explore. Uh, in a way that's not, again, not making you go out and find every single one or, or you know, the old school um, call up the strategy line or something like that, you know. Definitely. We don't want you going to game facts just to see how to play our game. Having collectibles that work in tandem with the movement system and actually do something in-game without requiring too much dedication to get to or even the need to collect them all was clearly what the devs were going for when adding these, and I think they nailed it. I think the whole bigger is better image open world games have cultivated when it comes to map design has resulted in some of the most vacuous game worlds in the last decade. Smaller maps, but higher concentration of things to do in said maps is always better in my mind. Now you obviously don't want to over clutter your game, however I'm sure walking around in Skyrim or riding your janky ass horse would be a lot less yawn inducing if it happened for shorter periods of time between the fun parts of the game. I know not all open world games can have this crazy movement system because they are going for a realism or a certain style, but it sure as hell doesn't have to be as boring as games like Skyrim, Fallout, or even Borderlands. Movement systems can be fun in open world games too. Add some fun vehicle mechanics, I said fun vehicle mechanics, or some parkour, or even just the ability to climb goes a long way. 
We want to explore your worlds and have fun while doing so. Some of the best times I've had in open world games have been discovering my own fun, getting lost and stumbling on something cool. But I'm a lot less likely to do that if I have to do this for hours to get there. The biggest battle here is fighting this fucking stamina bar. Give me some of this, and you've got my attention. Just to further drive home the point that Sunset's movement system is fun and quick, while many other open world games would be incredibly tedious without fast travel, I'll leave you with this clip of me traversing a portion of Sunset's map from top to bottom, and this clip of me walking from Solitude to Morthal, two of the closest towns to one another in Skyrim. If it seems like I've been picking on Skyrim a lot this video, it's because I have been. That game is a mess. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching friends, I'll see you next week, and enjoy the race. Cheers. Ready? I just stand here and watch them. There you have it, folks. Have I made my point clear enough yet? No? Okay, bye.